There we go. That's good enough, I guess. So good morning, everybody. It is me, Mallie and mom. And I am um, here this morning, I guess, to kind of share a video that's different from the ones that I've been doing, obviously, um, because I did want to be cognizant of the fact that I don't want to just share all of the positive that is happening with the puppy. I, I've made a commitment, at least to myself, to try to be very real and unvarnished um, with the story of raising a Malinois puppy, because I really do think that that, that truth, um, that transparency is lacking, kind of, when it comes to um, you know what you can expect when you're raising a Malinois puppy. And so um, I thought this morning has been like a complete shit show. And I really thought it's the perfect time for me to just kind of like sit down and have like a real moment with you guys and just share with you um, some of the frustrations, I guess, that I've been running into. And, um, you know, for example, it's like after 10 o'clock and I have yet to wash my face or brush my hair, um, brush my teeth. I mean, there's just days when having a Malinois puppy are very overwhelming because it's literally 24 seven. The only break that you're gonna have is if your puppy is in their crate. Like, let's be real about that. Your Malinois puppy cannot be out in the house like a typical puppy. It, it, your, your Malinois can't just be left to their own devices in a home, um, especially in a home with children. Um, the, the only break you're ever gonna have is if you put your Malinois puppy in a crate. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I actually utilize a crate um, quite a bit, but I also am trying to kind of walk that fine line between um, trying to find the balance, I guess, of, you know, having my Malinois puppy out and learn um, how to behave around my children, how to behave around all of us, how to behave uh, around the other dogs, how to have good house manners that she can't jump on the couch or jump up on us or eat my furniture or chew on the walls or whatever it may be, right? Like she has to be out to learn those things. And I want her to learn those things very soon. I don't wanna put her in a crate for the first, you know, seven months of her life and then put her in our house setting and be like, oh, here you go, figure it out, you know? That would be a nightmare. So um, I do have her out quite a bit just because she needs to be out to understand and to learn, um, you know, boundaries and limitations in the house and, and what's expected of her behavior in the house. Um, but that is no small task. Like, I really want you guys to understand that. If you have found my channel and you are considering a Malinois puppy, that is no small task. It can be very overwhelming um, and, and exhausting. Like, I have four children and two other dogs, and so I knew I knew ahead of time what to expect. Like, I, I, I had my eyes wide open, so I'm not complaining, but I am just sharing with you guys that it can, there can be days where it's just like, oh, why did I do this? You know, and like, this is one of those days. I'm just exhausted and I'm frustrated. And um, I think I'm approaching my first wall <laughs> with her. Like, I'm just, um, I'm very tired. And um, she's the type of dog where I can't leave her alone for a second in the house, especially at this age, or she's destroying something or getting into something or just, you know, she doesn't really settle on her own. Um, so, you know, even right now, she's sitting right here on the crate with me and she's chewing the handle, right? So, so these dogs are not still. They don't stay still. They don't sit still. They don't, you know, like, that's just not what they are. That's not how they are. That's not how they behave. They're not typical dogs. So you have to be prepared to be um, like really, really, really consistent. And we all have our days where we're not consistent. We all have our days where we slip up or we don't have time. 
Um, and so I guess the last couple of days I've been struggling with that. Um, <clears throat> I didn't feel good yesterday. I had a really bad headache <coughs> all day. And so she actually spent most of her day in the crate yesterday because I just couldn't deal with her. I had a bad headache and I just couldn't deal with it. Um, so I guess, um, what I did want to share, you know, what, what my point to all of this is, is to share with you guys that you are going to have days and times where you feel really frustrated and where you're really exhausted and you're, you're just kind of wondering like, Oh God, you know, like, why did I do this? Or, or maybe I don't want to do this anymore. Or it would be really easy to just like drop this and, and, and go back to how it used to be and, you know, not have to deal with this 24 seven. Um, and I've been feeling that way just the last couple days. And I wanted to share that with you guys because that's just the truth. When you have a Malinois puppy, you're going to have days like that. It's just that nobody tells you that. You know, all they're telling you is, oh, they're so great. And look at this dog who can do all these amazing things. And it's like, yeah, but what did it take to get there? <laughs> you know, um, and the answer is a lot. Like it takes a lot to get there and it's exhausting. And the first year, like year and a half with your Malinois is hard. Like it's exhausting. It's really difficult. So um, I wanted to just take a minute today to share that with you guys. One of the things that I've been kind of frustrated with with Storm, and I'm going to share it with you guys because I want to share her story. And this is her journey. Like this is the dog that she is, and this is what she's needing. And every single dog is different. Every Malinois you get is going to be different. And Storm is not super food motivated, and that has been a huge pain in the ass. Um, that makes things way harder than they need to be. And um, I've had to do a lot of um, like meal staggering or withholding meals, even several meals in a row, just to get what I would consider like a minimum of, you know, an acceptable drive to give me the focus I want in a session. And that really sucks. So um, that's something that I've been dealing with. And um, I wanted to show you guys what I'm talking about. So. Uh, I'm going to give you an example. So this morning, she did not have dinner last night, and she has not had breakfast yet today. It's a little after 10 a.m., and I'm going to get raw food for her, which I know she loves, and we're going to do a little session here, and I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, typically, a puppy of this age who has not had dinner or breakfast is going to be like, what can I do to get a bite of that food and work for you with great focus and great precision and do whatever you ask? And she just kind of will do it, but not crazy about it. And so that's making it a little more difficult, like I said, than it needs to be. And so um, I'm gonna show you guys what it is I'm talking about here. And, uh, and yeah, just kind of sharing her journey. This is what we're dealing with right now at this point in time. All right, so I have her put up on this kennel to kind of help keep her position straight because I'm trying to get some really nice straight downs um, and sits and stands from her. Cause that's something that I'm gonna need her to do uh, for French ring, which is something I would like to do with her. So um, that's why she's up on this raised platform. It also makes it easier for me in the sense that I do not have to bend down a whole lot to do these little sessions. So um, right now she's just offering me this behavior. And I'm just kind of letting her know, hey, I've got food, just to kind of see how interested she is. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. Sit. Good girl. Good. Stand. Good. But even this is slow to me. Stand. Like, it's just slow to me. Sit, sit, lay down. Good girl. So, um, as you can see, she's just still not very fast at all. Like, for a puppy that has not had um, dinner and has not had breakfast, I would expect her to be way more motivated than this, a lot quicker than this, and she's just not. Stand. So it's like, like you, like you can see here, it's, it's fine. She's doing what I'm asking her to do. There you go. But it's just not, you know, it's 
not real fast. It's not, it's not amazing. Lay down. Good. Lay down. And see, this is crooked. This is part of that crooked. See how she was laying down? It was kind of crooked. That's part of why. That's part of why I have her up here. Because here, you see how this is straight now? That's part of why I have her up on this raised, um, smaller section, is so that I can keep her body straighter. Because what I'm looking for in French ring is I want her to do sit, down, stand, all with her feet, her front feet never really moving and her body staying as straight as possible. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. So if this was just, you know, your typical obedience, um, there you go. this would be just fine. Like this is, this is great. This is fine. But for what I'm looking for, for the sport that I want to get involved in, I'm just not like super, super thrilled. Is it workable? Maybe. Um, and maybe not. We'll really see what happens in the next few weeks.